Hello again, everyone. It is Professor Oleander, and we're currently starting day number 11 here on the SOL Railroad. And over the last couple of days, we have done a bunch of freight contracts. We have finished the bridge in Bryson, so now we've opened up a whole new section worth of railroading, which comes with its own set of problems. Uh... Among the things is new challenges of how we're going to tackle everything. And I have decided that we need to change direction just a little bit in how we were going about running the railroad. And because we have more ground to cover and the, the grades are going to be getting steeper, I need to have engines that are a little bit more powerful. So running the passenger service while our little 210 here has done valiantly, uh, it's time for a bit of an upgrade. I need someone that uh, knows how to get an engine dancing just right in her slippers. And uh, somebody that can get it there on the advertised, if you know what I mean. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the newest engine on our little railroad here. You know him, you love him, you've probably had his train whistle at some time in your life. The man from KC himself... Casey Jones. That's right. Our little 210 here. <clears throat> Sorry, 410. 410. There's four of those there. I about killed myself whenever I saw this thing. It's so beautiful. The 382, the Illinois Central Railroad, the last engine, I believe, that was running when Casey Jones met his fate with his uh, brave little fireman, Sim, who jumped for his life and was lucky to live. Casey was not. Uh, it was funny. I actually I knew I was going to make this engine as soon as I found out that they made this 10-wheeler. I always call these big 10-wheelers because they got big wheels. Um but there's also a whistle that's kind of similar to the one that Casey Jones ran, which is, uh, what whistle am I actually using? I don't know. Really but the Casey Jones whistle has is a boiler tube whistle, best I can understand, and um, has a very, very low sound. This one I thought fit. So the little 382 here is going to become the passenger engine. Uh, this thing has all sorts of power shouldn't have any trouble running passenger service between Whittier and Bryson which coincidentally I didn't run passenger service after I opened up the way to Bryson so now the people are mad at me uh, so my reputation dropped a little bit but it's fine we're going to make it up today so rather than get rid of the 200 because I am fond of this little engine it does its job for the size that it is this engine is going to end up working in Bryson, and I'm going to leave the two consolidations here in Whittier, and they will handle this end of the railroad. This engine will go up and handle Bryson Yard. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. What about all them cars down yonder? That's a technical term. Down yonder on the, wind, on the uh, interchange, not the Windershine, on the interchange. So... I need a bigger engine, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, it's like, well, no, not that one, and I thought about, well, what about this one? No, nobody likes 2102. So I decided that there's only one engine that I could use to haul freight over a long distance where I don't have to worry about hobos getting on it, you know, where... The man would rather kill a man than give a hobo a free ride. So, I had to make some phone calls, call in a couple of favors, you know, do that sort of thing. He was reluctant at first, but, you know, I can be very persuasive. So, let me introduce you to our new engine, the 19, the Shack. So, this guy, our little 282 Mikadoo, the successor to the 383 Mikadee, will run the freight cars that I have here on the interchange in Whittier. It'll run them back and forth between 
Bryson, and uh, Whittier. And, it, and the reason why I'm doing this is because this is way future planning. Mike is going to be able to handle more for longer than a Connie is. Because I thought about double heading the Connies, and I'm like, well, then I still got the stuff here in Whittier that's got to be taken care of, and I don't want to be running engines back and forth all day. The way that I'm setting this railroad up is we have, for right now, we have an interchange here, and then there's a yard in Bryson. And while, let me bring the UI back up. So right now we're looking at one, two, three, four, where's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cars that got to go to the sawmill. <coughs> then I have one to go to Stenzel, one to go to Whittier House Track. I've got three that are going to end up in Ela, and then one, two, three, four, five that are going to Bryson. Bryson Colon Lumber, or yeah, Lumber Colon Supply, Standard Oil, Appalachia Hardwood, Appala Appalachian Hardwoods, which that's a point of contention down here in the south. Is it Appalachian or is it Appalachian? <clears throat> I always call it Appalachian. I am like dying here. I don't know what I inhaled. It was nothing illegal, I can assure you. Um, so yeah, we got all these cars that have got to be that have got to be switched. You'll you won't hear me say shunt. So typically, what I have done is <clears throat> I will take the cars that are bound for Whittier and put them here on. We'll call this track three for right now, and then I'll take everything up to Ela and beyond, and then do the switching up there. This is going to make these cars being on the end is going to make it just a little bit trickier, but. Uh, I am a tricky guy. I can get this sorted out. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. I think what the first move is going to be is to pull everything forward. Put, well, actually, no. The thing to do is going to be to put all this stuff up on three. Take all the Ela stuff and the Whittier stuff and put it here. Run around to the back of it drop the Whittier stuff, put the Ela stuff on the back end of the interchange and then shove everything like I've been doing. Once I do that and you get to Ela, it's it's all gravy. And then the Connie can actually the Connies can stay down here and switch all this. I gotta get the Mikadu up the I know it's called Mikado. Before anybody gets upset, it's a Mikado it is it, it forever in my heart is going to be Mikadu because it's all I've always described it. it's a 282 Mikadu and you can't prove to me otherwise if you can well great for you so <clears throat> i guess the first order of business is actually there is one thing that i want to show first before i get involved this guy right here so this guy is our timetable that was made up by somebody in the discord and he I, I don't know if he does these things for a living or if this is just like a side project of his but he makes these freaking timetables and they're amazing and uh because he does that um I'm like using this from now on. That's why I want to plug it. It's on the Discord server. I cannot remember the guy's name. But if you go on the Discord server into, um, God, what is the tab? Hang on. Stand by. Oh, I don't have Discord open. Um, if you go in Discord, it's in like community. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up on my phone as I throw my phone across the room. Um, let's see. I should have pulled this up. I didn't think this out. It is in community resources. I knew it was community something, but I couldn't remember the second part. So if you go in the Discord server, which I will try to remember to put the link in the description, you go in the community, the Railroader Discord, 
community resources tabs. It's on there for, it's one of the newer ones as of this recording for the map. And it's great. These are just like the ones that you would see on the uh, Run 8 uh, depot server. These, those sort of maps. It gives you car links. I had to ask if these car links are actually the ones. If When you look at these industry tracks here where it says eight cars, that is the number of cars that can be spotted on those tracks, which means that's how many that the industry will recognize. So if we go down here, I don't want to spoil too much of the railroad. We're here in Whittier. This is the Whittier interchange, and he probably ought to add, that's probably a suggestion I would make to him, is to say these are, define which ones are the interchange tracks, which is actually from about this switch all the way back, and this switch all the way back. So we can hold 21 cars there, 28 cars there. So the plan, as I said, I'm gonna cut off, cut off the Bryson cars so that they're first out, bring out here with the Ela and the Whittier car, shove them into the track here, then run around, get on the back end of it, come out, shove onto the back end of that, and uh, leave the Whittier cars on track two, take everything on track three, and then go west. And then we have to, there, the Connies are going to handle everything down here just because it's going to be easier. Um, I may let the, the, the uh, 10 wheeler do it. I actually thought about double heading it up to, uh, up to Bryson, but I think I'm going to not do that right now. So we have a drop here, a drop here, a drop here. And then if I go up here to the next page, this is Bryson, lots and lots of tracks. I have a, I have a couple of drops here, and then we have a drop at Standard Oil, which I actually peaked at yesterday. There it is. There's Standard Oil, so we have a drop there. And what we will do is once those are serviced, this is where the 210, or the, I keep wanting to call it a 210. It's not. It's a 464, because I keep wanting to say 10-wheeler and to something for some reason. Well, the 10 wheeler, the 200 is going to take, it will be responsible for getting all the cars back here into the yard, put them on the yard, take the Mikadoo, run him back and get everything up there. Then the Mike can do some of the, some of the work. One of the things that's interesting about Bryson is see this Walker, the uh, little Walker spur here. Let me go down to the very bottom. This is the Walker branch. I went over this yesterday. Let me tell you something. 3%, and it ain't lying. It is 3%. These are switchbacks, and they are legit switchbacks. You would need, you cannot put very many cars. I mean, it says 11 cars, but it's like, you, you're going to have a hard time pulling 11 cars up that spur. So, <clears throat> kind of debating on what I want to run that. At some point, I can see that I'm going to need a, an 080. Um, so that will probably be the next one because as I've been reading through the um, Discord, it seems like Pulpwood is where the money's at. So I can see using this quite a bit, especially when you've got, uh, this is Pulpwood, that holds 5, 10, these are logs. That's all logs. What's up here in Whittier? I can't remember how many. Let's see. Four cars, six cars, four cars. So, I mean, I can, what I can see happening is me just buying a whole bunch of skeleton cars and just running nothing but a, you know, like a railroad would do. I can see me buying a string of skeleton cars, just loading them all up, putting them out into the Whittier yard and just hanging on to them, and then just running a massive train up to Bryson and, or yeah, pulpwood cars, 
and just running a massive train up to Bryson and say, here you go, have them. They're all yours. Which is kind of what I've been doing with the the sawmill. That's how I keep the sawmill supplied. Um, so let me let me minimize this guy. And let me make sure it doesn't come back up. Um, and I'll turn off studio mode. Okay. So yeah, if you remember, I had talked about doing that before. I went and bought eight more um, skeleton cars. And let me go into free fly so it's a little bit easier to maneuver around. If you go over here. So all of my skeleton cars, except for the last one, are empty. And this is how I keep the sawmill supplied overnight. So I've got eight cars here that are unloading in the night hours because apparently the, the uh, sawmill runs 24-7. And then up here on the Connolly branch, I've got the 30, which is loading these cars. Now, I could bring him down, but I'm not going to just yet. I let the AI run these trains. I'm going to go ahead and set everything up so that we can run these cars up to Bryson. And the first thing it's going to do is we're going to run the passenger train up to the passenger station. And while I'm here, I want to see how many passengers we have. Now, one thing that I am going to say, and I'm not overly fond of it, is I noticed when I opened up the line to Bryson, it was like the passengers for Ela evaporated. It was like they turned into Borgs or something like that. It was like they assimilated and say we don't want, we no longer want to go to to Whittier. We want to go to Bryson. And it, it, I ran a couple more trips like that. I was like, well, I don't want to go to Bryson until I, you know, can do a video on it. And um, but yeah, it was like all my passengers that wanted to go to between Ela and Whittier. They just, it's like they all died. It's like, screw that. We want to go to the big city. Okay. One thing I should probably do, and this was another suggestion somebody put in the Discord. You have to go through here and click every freaking one of these things. I actually just want the ones that are up here that are bound for the interchange. Um, but somebody had mentioned a select all. But for right now, I just want the ones that need to go to the interchange. So it's just the ones that are up here at Stenzel. So we'll get that here. Those will be the last ones that get swapped. And that'll be done by consolidation. It'll probably be the one that's sitting over here, 31. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go up to Ela. And we'll see what's in Ela to pick up. And we don't have anything, which is surprising because these cars have been up here for a couple days now. And that is a lie. That That is a lie, sir. You have cars for me. You, you, you have cars. Apparently I didn't click on it. Or they didn't load in or something. Okay, so we do have one car here. Which is this is the uh, that's a, yeah that's the house track okay so let's go down here and swap out the two hundred for the three eighty two so let's see we want to we want to set our handbrake and then we want to do that number. And I need to select you, don't I? It's not like I'm sending you to the glue factory. Yet, that comes later. Alright, headlights on. How far up do we need to go? I'm trying to decide how I want to get him up there. I may actually have this engine bring all the stuff up to Whittier. It just makes sense. And then he'll just... Now that I think about it now, the, the, the way to do it is have this engine take the cars to Whittier, drop them off, just have him follow behind, 
the uh, the uh, Mikado, have him follow behind the 19. Drop the cars in Whittier, do that switch, and then go up to Eat, then have the mic drop the, the cars in Ela. Have him go on to Bryson, and then have the um, then have the ten wheeler go up there, and then do the switching behind it, and then just let him. It's going to mean that the mic's going to be sitting still, but trust me, it's going to get busy because these are tier. They're either tier fours or tier five contracts that I took. So today may not be busy, but tomorrow is going to be busy. The is going to be like, <laughs> what am I sign up for? Okay, switch. Switch. Toot, toot. And I can't remember which whistle I used for the 19, but it's it is a different one. I think it's one of the five chimes. So so far, I still like the game. It is. Um, it is a lot of running around. I will give it that. Even me running AI trains, it is a lot of running around. It definitely helps if you have people, which I'm going to make a separate. I, I'm i kind of going back and forth on it. I want to get this railroad finished before I do um, regular passenger, before I get regular multiplayer stuff. But I am thinking about starting a multiplayer server for me and a couple of my friends. Um to play on that is different or that is a sandbox but I kind of like the prospect of needing the money to uh, to do what we need to do All right don't slam into the passenger cars because they're expensive Verse 10, get you out of the way. Perfect. That was a perfect coupling. You cannot tell me otherwise. Alright, get him clear of the switch. These are all cold up too. That was the last thing I did before uh, I slept last night was to get them, get everything fueled up because I knew today was going to be a busy day. All right, go with Jesus. Actually, we'll keep you to third. And then I'll have to go up there and manually spot him. And that is good enough. All right, Shaq. It is your time to shine. I picked a whistle that was close to the one that's in the in the movie. If you don't know what movie I'm talking about, we can't be friends anymore. You you legit need to go and find out what locomotive I'm talking about, what movie I am talking about, and if you don't watch it, then if you don't like it, then just, just leave. Just I mean go. It's the greatest train movie that was ever made. Cannot tell me otherwise. Alright, I'll tell you. It's the Emperor of the North. That is, it is hands down probably the best movie about railroading that I've ever seen. A lot of people are, that are, there are some people that are going to say, no, that's, that's crazy. You look at some of the stuff that they did in the making of that movie, it is absolutely insane. I mean, they are legit walking on the tops of cars, hanging underneath the cars, running the way railroads would have ran in the 30s. Now, I mean, are there some poetic, poetic licenses? Oh, yeah, sure. But um, you're, they would never make a movie today the way that they made that movie and without CGI because there was no CGI back then. So it's like when they're on top of the cars, they are legit on top of the cars. When they're on other cars, um, I mean, you physically see them go under the cars while the cars are moving. It is it is insane. Let me keep this to 25. He'll get up there and he'll, he'll stop at the fusee in front of the station, which is what I want. Uh, let's see here. 
So let's go. I need to select this engine, don't I? So we need to grab this one and bring him back. For those of you that don't know, this locomotive was in another movie. This was in Stand By Me. If you remember... Ah! Did it again. If you remember the movie Stand By Me, um, there was a train that was... The, the boys were crossing a trestle and the one kid thinks he hears a train and he does the whole Indian the um does it Tonto the Tonto he doesn't lean down and listen to the rail but he leans down and, and puts his hand on the rail and can hear the vibrations so he does that whole uh, Lone Ranger thing where he, he can hear the train coming and then they have to run and run across the the bridge before the train runs them over it's funny, but the locomotive that was in that movie is the, uh, it's the 19, the OP and E 19, Oregon, Oregon Pacific and Eastern. This particular locomotive is currently at Steamtown, uh, undergoing restoration to be put back into operation. That happened. That was announced probably about. Six seven years ago now and uh, I was so happy to hear it that they were going to put this engine back in operation uh, sadly Ernest Borgnine is not alive anymore neither is uh, Lee Marvin and I want to say I want to say David Carradine is dead as well actually now that I think about it I, most of the main actors because the guy that plays the yardlet, um, he passed away. No, the engineer passed away, and I think the fireman passed away. So I think everybody that made that engine made that movie's dead. It's so sad. Ernest Borgnine died. I honestly can't remember. It's been several years ago. But uh, yeah, bummer. But at least the engine's going to live on. From what I understand, I did a little bit of reading on it before I made this video. Um, the 19 had kind of a had a legal issue before it got acquired and sent to, to uh, did I say Steamtown? It went to the big roundhouse. Or the, I'm sorry, the Age of Steam roundhouse. One of the other ones, one, something that I said, it went there, and it's being restored to operations. I'm, like, freaking tired tonight for some reason. But it's being restored for operation. Before it went there, I don't know why I keep saying it, Steamtown, that's where the big boy was. Been there, worked on that, seen it, got the t-shirt. Um, <clears throat> before that engine went to where it's being currently restored, it, uh, it got into some legal trouble and they just it went up for auction I think it got sold for like $400,000 which I thought was an astronomical amount of money for a steam locomotive that wasn't running before somebody says something that was not running um, but it, it, it uh, you're buying the history with it as well that was a movie engine you know did I Okay, I, I know I'm asleep because I put the wrong one on there. That was the car.
if you hear me cut the mic out every now and then, it's because there's a lot of noise in the background that I don't want getting picked up. Either people talking or just general noise. So I had to cut it out there for just a second. I haven't... <laughs> I haven't talked about it, and I really don't want to talk about it right now. Um, stuff that's happened. And it's just because it's so close to the holidays. It's like I don't want to bring anybody down. But um, a lot of life stuff has happened here in the last month or so. It's actually it's a month and two days. But uh, I won't bring it up in this video because we're so close to Christmas. I don't want to... Don't want to rain on nobody's parade, if you know what I mean, eh? Now, I was hoping that I could fit that all in there, but it ain't going to happen, so we're going to have to... Well, yeah, well, we're going to we're gonna make it. You know, if it don't fit the first time, keep shoving until it does. We'll just go ahead and send it all the way back, and it'll just save me a little bit of time. I was What I was hoping was that this was all going to fit, but I'm going to be about three cars short. I was just going to run around it that way, but that's all right. We'll just get everything here so it's in the clear, and then we'll come around, run it over. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you 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 can see how much this this uh, mic is straining to get this train started because it's it's only 726 tons, um, but there is a little bit of a grade here. And if I it's not going to come up on screen, but if I'm looking here at my map, it doesn't have the grade on there, so I'm assuming that it's less than a percent. But, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and make two cuts. So Whittier, handy thing that they color coded everything. So we want to tie the handbrake here and we'll make the cut. Actually, we want to tie both handbrakes. We want to make, tie that one too. We're going to make a cut here. And we'll come back here and tie onto that. We'll put all that on the other one. Bob's your uncle, and he's your fant. I always say that wrong, so get off me. Make a cut there. It's Bob's your uncle, and Fanny's your aunt. All right, so let's get up here. And there is some definite lag whenever you get a lot of cars in the game. I've actually toned down some stuff, so I've toned down the trees, toned down the, um, toned down the grass, just to try and say the frame rate. It seems like this time of morning and at night, like twilight, is when I get the worst frame rate. And I'm sure that they're going to optimize some things, um, but... I, I just noticed it whenever I was moving around there. I was like, yeah, there is a little bit of lag getting in this. Alright, we want to... So there is apparently wheel slip in the game, but it's apparently very hard to do, which I am... It's, it's, I've said this before, it just adds another dynamic to the game. It's one more thing that, uh, you have to kind of manage. And this game is still in its infancy, and I know the devs have, have said that they are going to have it. Because, I mean, it's, it was literally in the game. So... Where's my guy? Are you not on the train? You need to be on the train. Actually, yep. Well, if I can get on it. Well, this guy is faster than a cheetah. He can run 30 some mile an hour. <laughs> guy should have been in Gone with the Wind. Okay, brakes. Do the thing you're not supposed to do. Well, it's actually how they used to brake in the old days, but. All right.
That is a, I think that's the Nathan Five chime, if I'm not mistaken. Let me find out. Nope, Central of Georgia. Very similar to a nickel plate whistle. Which I'm pretty sure is a Nathan. Well, speaking of, um, 765's whistle used to sound a lot better than it does now. And I had heard through the grapevine that the reason behind it is when they took the whistle off, they were going to clean it, and somebody, somebody, um, somebody turned the bell and did not realign it the right way. See, I'm getting... I don't know how much of a frame rate drop I'm getting, but I'm getting a frame. I'm getting a frame something. Um, but somebody didn't orient the bell back to the bowl in the same orientation, and um, it it sounds a whole lot different. You listen to recordings of it ten years ago; it's completely different to recordings now. I think they did try and go back and and chain it, change it to where they thought it was because nobody marked it. Um, it's still still not the same it just goes to show you how you can everybody can get so used to hearing something a certain way and you can tweak one little thing and it completely messes up everything it's like you ruined my childhood oh my god kablam kabloom come on where's the kabli Where's the kubli? Right there. Okay. Sorry. So there's a cut there. Alright. Back that ass up. Once we get past the switch here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up there and get that passenger train sorted. We gotta do a lot of dosy do in here as soon as I get these trains moving because I gotta bring the log train down. Which actually I probably could right now. Let me get this train stopped and I'll go ahead and give him orders because he'll come down to the switch and he'll stop because it's lined against him. Good enough. Alright, bring up the map. This is one of the nice things that I can do is I can just click on the engine there. I know he's ready to move. Give him a reverse and he'll just start coming down the hill. And he'll stop because I've got a switch thrown against him. So one of the, it's just, you know, the joys of life. All right, let's get this guy moved on up to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Try not to slam into this load of, uh, what do we got there? We got coal. I don't know what that would be going to the hardwoods place for. And we got dimensional lumber, oil, dimensional lumber, and some more coal. That'll be dimensional lumber. Actually, I think all of this is going to be dimensional lumber. Nope, there's metal stock. That's got to go to Stins. What's in the other one? Miscellaneous. Oh, what kind of miscellaneous? You ain't from Mexico, are you? Okay. It's been a long-ish week. It's been a long-ish year, long-ish life. Insert adjective here. All right, let's see a little bit further, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Come on. That'll do. Yeah, let's see. Oh, no, God. Cameras don't fail me now. All right, that's set. Go up here. I did set a handbrake somewhere. Right there. Okay. I can go. I could go ahead and tell him to go forward so let me make sure that is all the cars yeah everything else is for Whittier alright 
get lost. I'm gonna go get the passenger train set up and get them set up for their run. Hello. Manual, and we want to select. And go ahead and bring him third. I think for this one, we'll just um, let me check my track map here to make sure. Bryson Station's on Main. Okay, we can do that. We're just we're gonna make an express run to Bryson. Let's get this going here. I can already see that I'm probably going to have to add a few more coaches for right now. This is plenty. So, how many are waiting? 87. We got a pick capacity for 120. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to buy two more coaches. So, we're going to do this as an express to Bryson, copy to coupled. One of the things I didn't talk about was uh, I changed the color of my passenger cars. I know they look brown, but this is actually the color code for Pullman Green because I was trying to find an Illinois Central color and the only one that I could come up with was either the brown or the orange. And I didn't like them and I thought about the period that Casey Jones was in and I was like, uh, they were probably just Pullman Green, which is blah, but um, whatever. Probably wouldn't have a caboose on there, but I'm still trying to be somewhat realistic in that we would need that for a shove move. And as soon as we get all the passengers for Bryson loaded, and they are good and drunk now, so we can just send this thing on the road for all the beans. <laughs> Keep it between the gauge. I'm serious. Don't look at me like that. All right. Now, we've got to go back down here. Grab the 19. I need to bring him on up. Did I not turn you loose? Or have I got to switch thrown against you? I bet I got to switch thrown against you. I got to switch thrown against you. All right. Fine. Do that way. Let's get up here. He's only going to go so far, so... Before he gets to the fusee, so I'm just going to be standing here to get that out of the way, and then as soon as he goes past, we'll throw the fusee back down. That is one of the suggestions that people have made, is um, the stuff that I've been talking about, about point-to-point. -point. Let me just pull up the... The 30 is coming on down. He's going to stop here at the leg of the, uh, that would be the east leg of the Y. The 382. I'm just curious how fast he's going. 34. Track speed. Um, I know it's on the timetable here. Track speed there is 30, 35 ish. So let him do his thing. this guy will stop just before the station and as soon as I get uh, oh crap I forgot he's going to stop for that flare as soon as I get him out of the way I gotta go and I gotta go get the flare for the, th for the uh, 382 there's always so much to do man come on switch right there maybe works for me how close is he to the station he's still a good, good bit off this is why I need this is one of the reasons why I went to wanted to go to Bryson is because I can I can actually be up there at the CTC 
and control the switches so I don't have to keep running back and forth. It wouldn't, I don't think these go on CTC. I know that that is one of the milestones is signals to Bryson. So we'll see. Take the the doohickey off the thingamabob, and he's lined. And then we'll just wait here for our passenger train to go through. And then I'll have to go down there and manually run the. Um... Actually, no, I don't. I can do it from here. Let me go ahead and select the nineteen. Put him in manual mode, brakes off, and just let him kind of coast over. <laughs> I know once he makes it to the station, he's clear. Had to do it. Off he goes into the wild blue yonder. And I forgot to set a flare at the station. So let me set one here so that he'll stop. And we need to go to Bryson. We need to go here. That was the one thing that I knew I was, well, I'd say I knew I was forgetting, but I. I knew there was something that I was forgetting to do. And let me just kind of guess here. He's going to stop a little bit before, so I'm going to say the fuse. He needs to be right there. And as far as I am aware, everything down here should be set for him. He's going to come straight in here. Let's go and see him. Probably not going to catch him over the bridge. Yeah, he's going over the bridge right now. bridge that we just built. All that hard work. And we're on, I didn't go over finances. We are on day 11. This is the 9 to 10. We did 945 passenger fares, 25 freight deliveries. We had an outstanding way bill in Whittier and we lost a little bit on our passenger services just because I didn't run anything to, to Bryson. No big deal. What I should have done is I should have set up a stop in Bryson, but I wanted this one to be, or a stop in Ela to pick up the, the people going to, to Bryson. It's all right. We'll do it on the way back. I wanted the first one to be an express. So... How much money did we say we had? 7000 and we owe 26000 I had to borrow a bunch of money for engines. So, so while that's going on there, he's coming on up the way. I got him set for 30. He's doing his thing. How fast are you doing? 34. Let's actually follow this engine. I do like the little shimmy that the cars have got. You can you can kind of see how the the cars are kind of going back and forth. The thing about jointed rail is that you do get a little bit of rocking when people come knocking. And one of the things that I'm noticing is the terrain is kind of loading in, so I'm seeing it just a little bit choppy. And it, they're they're gonna get this. 
they're going to get this a lot better. I will, for a game that's in early access, I'm really impressed with what they've been able to do. There's always going to be room for improvement, but um, I told them 45, so they're going 35, which is fine. I mean, I did tell Casey to keep it between the gauge, but at the same time, like, get it there, you know. Though, <laughs> this is the nice thing about running is you a railroad timetable was actually that it was a timetable you you the, the railroad kind of didn't care how you got it there as long as you were on time they did have speed limits they had places that were called measured miles and before they had speedometers you would actually time yourself through uh, miles and you had to be at a certain place at a certain time because if you weren't there at a certain time the train that you were going to meet may show up and say well you know he may be expecting, well, I don't have to stop for him. He's waiting on me. And, you know, then all of a sudden he's got to stop because he wasn't expecting you. Or, or he wasn't expecting to stop. Now all of a sudden he's got to stop. Big, big mess. But the railroads were able to do it. Okay. So... We're going to drop the cars here in Hila. Let me pull my tab up again here. So actually, I needed to shove forward first. That's right. So I need to take care and troll the 19. And then I need to shove all this stuff forward. Yep, I got to do manual. Take control of this engine. Get all the cars for Bryson over here, and then we're just going to drop all the cars for Ela right here, and then we're going to keep going. So this will be this is my road crew. And then, like I said, when the ten wheeler comes up, he's going to handle everything that needs to be set out. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I'm kind of abbreviating some of this stuff because I'm in I'm in the middle of making video and I'm more focused on I'm trying to focus more on fun and windy banner that I'm so famous for as opposed to focusing on this. I mean in actuality I could kick all these cars. But I don't feel like it right now. So we'll just make it quick. I mean, I guess I could. Now that I figured out how to do this. And off and rolling before they even stop. And then what you would do is, like if you had a caboose or something on there, the brake one would jump off and jump on the caboose and you keep on going. And that's how they used to run the railroads back in the day. So shift clicking on the knuckles, you it makes it, um, 
it closes both angle cocks at the same time and opens up the knuckles. It's actually great. And I didn't know about it until I actually saw it in one of Kerbo's streams. So let's see. I don't want him to get too carried away, so I'm going to kind of keep an eye on him. Go over here. We want to throw this switch. And then we want to come all the way up in here. And I'm going to set a flare right down here at this crossover. So right here. And crap. No oh, good, I can't do that. We'll put that in road. For, uh, keep him 35. 174 smackeroonies. How many people are waiting to go back? 102. Yeah, we're going to have to buy another car today. We're going to have to buy at least one more. Probably two. Let's go ahead and load these eyes up. We're going to take, we're going to go ahead and take Ela and we're going to take Whittier. Now the problem with this is the flare setup works in one direction. So going between Whittier and Ela works fine when I'm going between Whittier and Ela. When I'm going between Bryson and Ela, that means I got to move the the flares. It's a bit of a pain. It means that once they get there, I have to manually respot the train. It's not it's not the end of the world it is a nuisance so let's look around here in Bryson the next step in Bryson is gonna be if I can get up there because I'm not in first person right here is where the dispatcher console will be and we won't see it just yet the DS that's the dispatchers office that's the next step, and a matter of fact, I think I have enough money to do it. Nope, well, 7,500, and I have 73. The next loan installment is 920 in four days. Um, we actually, actually, as soon as this, as soon as this train's loaded, I can go ahead and send him back to Ela, and he should be. I think he's at capacity now. Did I not copy that to coupled? Well, now it's copied to coupled. Okay, now they're loading. I was gonna say they should be on there. Thirty-seven, yeah. Why are they not loading? Why are they not loading Ela? I checked both of them, or maybe it did load Ela, but it's not loading them now. Interesting. So, how much are passenger cars? How much are passenger cars, dude? 84 for 6,000 or 60 for 4,000. So just doing the basic napkin math here, it's, let me write these down so that way I don't forget it. You get 84 passengers for, what is it, 59, 99 59 99 90 and then we got the 60 passengers for 4139 I'm not going to do that math in my head I'm just curious of what the math on that works out to be so we say 41.39 divided by 60, that is, call that $69, nice, per passenger to break even. So that means we've got to run, well actually I don't even, I don't remember what the fare was on this one. I'll keep better track of it on this one here. So we're going to, we're going to take a full load, aren't we? Yeah, full load. So we're going to say 120 passengers, and then I didn't even look to see how much it was going to cost um, to run, how much it cost to run between Whittier and uh, uh, 
Actually, yeah, I can't find out. I can, I can do that right here. 87 fares for $174. So, $174 divided by $87. $2. So, $2 to run between Whittier and Bryson. This fare is going to met us $240. Okay. So it'll take 30. So for the 60 passenger coach, the. Ah, not that one. For the 60 passenger, this one would take basically 35 trips to break even. Okay. On the. The other one, the 1915, that is 59.99 divided by 84, that's 71. That one, or I'm sorry, did I say 35? It was 69, so it would be 34 and a half, so 35. This one would take 36. It's apples to oranges. Same thing. Um, it works out. You basically break even. It doesn't really matter. It's going to take you the same amount of trips. The The problem is you're going to have a higher upfront cost than if you bought the other one. Um, but then, of course, if you get this guy, you get your 20% 20, 20 bonus, but you're hauling almost 60 passengers less but as I said in the last video you gotta have five cars to get the bonus you take five of them I mean that's six thousand you're talking about thirty grand worth of cars if you bought all these you bought thirty grand then you gotta turn right back around and you gotta spend another seventy three hundred for it so let's see it's a tricky business, and I'm kind of torn about which ones I want to, which ones I want to buy. Anyway, we're loaded, and we got cars here ready to go. And I honestly, yeah, all these guys are bound for Whittier. Let me just make sure. No, I got some for Ela. All right, so go to Ela. Go on to Ela, there, buddy, bro. Go set your switch, don't I? This is the fun side of dispatching, is having to do all this mess. I don't mind babysitting the AI if it was just a little bit more streamlined to handle. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to go down here to Ela and set this flare up so that way they can unload. So we're going to we'll snuff this flare out and we'll set it about right here. Yeah, that should work. That'll give him a chance to unload while I go up here and work. Alright, so we want to take the 19. And honestly, these guys have got to go. I know Standard Oil is... Where did I see it? Is it back? It's... It's not far from here. I just, I literally saw it yesterday. It's kind of off to the side. It's right there. So Standard Oil is right here. I know. Hard times for the Rockefellers. You know, I didn't know if you caught a glimpse of that, but you can see how the, you can see how the railroad starts climbing. That was the reason why I got that 282. Because I know that the railroad's going to start getting steeper from here, and it, it it turns up in a big way. Okay, so we've got Bryson Lumber Company, which is apparently right over here somewhere. Okay, so that is right here. 
I don't know how many cars. I guess that'll hold both of these because there's just two. That's got to go down yonder. This one, Appalachian Hardwoods. Uh, can I zoom out enough? Is it over here? Standard oil, I can actually just barely see it. 1.1. Standard oil was 1. Point, no, it's okay, it's up here somewhere. I'm gonna guess that's it right there. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's where the hardwood place is. Okay. Or whatever that was. Whatever that other industry was. So I can do the switching with this guy. Yeah, the Appalachian hardwoods. Appalachian hardwoods. Alright, so while that's going on, let's get down here. Wait for my cars to load in and my logs. And this is how I've been handling the sawmill. I think I had mentioned that before. This is a good time to do it because I don't have any flares. The 31, go ahead and tell him to reverse. Give him clear for 25. Open the switch. Because this has been just easier for me to let the AI handle this. And just get him back. And then I'll, I'll come over here and grab these cars. Actually, how many cars is that? Nine? Uh, I don't think that's going to fit on the switchback. I think it will just barely fit in there. Let me check my timetable because he's actually got the car counts. Yeah, nine cars is it, but I think that's counting. That's going to be counting the engine and the tender, so we're going to have to cut it in half. Which is, it's not a, the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. It just... I mean, we're still, it's only 7 o'clock. We're going to have this, we're going to have this whole, we're going to have it all switched out. It's going to be done by 8 o'clock. It's going to be huge. It's going to be famous. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be a beautiful wall. You know, it's all going to be done. Promise. All right. You're done. Let's get you back. Yada, yada. Whoops. No, I didn't want you to do that. Not you, yada yada. You, yada yada. So the nice thing about AI is once I get them, once I give them a direction, I just say go. They go. So as soon as I get him clear the switch, I'm just going to say, okay, go ahead, spot it. And then he, when he's done, they'll start unloading. And then as soon as I get the other one past the flare, um, I just say go. And then he'll go all the way up to the L2 and load. The other thing that I, I didn't mention this, over here on the Connolly branch, the L1 spurs here, I've got five cars in reserve. So if it gets to a point where it's more than I can handle or if they're unloading too quickly, I've got five emergency cars, loads of uh, five emergency cars worth of logs that I can just go up there and grab if I need to. Alright, you're good. Road 15, go away. You. Yes, you. I'm going to go ahead and give you forward for 30. Yeah, I know you're looking at another train. I'm looking at him too. As soon as he clears the switch, that train's off and gone. Then we get the 10 wheeler out, bring him over, let him handle these cars. He should be a. Well, I say should. We're, we're going to find out what he can do. Coming up this little grade here. This is the reason why there's a switchback, by the way. If you were curious. Because of that, that steep grade. I don't know a whole lot about the history of this railroad. But I'm assuming that this sawmill location has probably been here for a while. And that the railroad came through. And they sort of offered. They said, hey, do you want a connection? And this was the best way that they could do it. Because if you think about it, 
I guess you probably could do it. It would be hard to get over here where you need to load because you'd have to come like way back here to get in. And you can actually see that they had to make a cut here just for the, salt, the switchback. So I imagine it would be a bit of a pain. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot you got a fuse here. Damn you and your your things. Wait a minute. Okay, you're fine. They're all spotted. It's fine. How are you? Had the wrong train selected. Give me 30. Can you not give me 30? Can you give me this one? Now give me 30. Oh, it's 31. Never mind. Never mind. You're good. I am going to be glad when they get this AI system sorted out a little bit better. All right, go. Get out of my kitchen. All right, somebody stopped for a few Z. Was that 382? It was 382. Let's go up here and get him sorted out. And he's unloading. Well, he's unloading what he's got. And there's our passengers for Ela. We got passengers for Whittier. I'm not going to load the passengers for Bryson just yet because it's going to cut into our profits. And now we are good to go. So now I have to tell him. I can already see this is going to be a pain. But it is what we have to do for right now. Once I get the signals. Off you go. 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 The other way. Go. Yeah, I think once I get signals, and I'd have to look at the board, but I think I can throw a signal for him. I can be, like, literally up there sitting dispatcher and just say, okay, you're, you're done. Okay. get him all set up to go away and I realize I'm doing a bunch oops other way I'm trying to do a whole bunch of things in a very short amount of time one of the things that I have to remember to do is I want to clear this coal loader out tonight so that way it can go on the interchange and I can get a load of fuel in for tomorrow. And I know some of you are wondering when are we going to diesel fly? We're not. We're not. Why would I? <laughs> Diesels. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Those things, those obnoxious, monotonous drones. No, we're not going to put diesels on this railroad. That's, that's, yeah, that's so funny. Crap. Mm, no, we got to run around it the other way. We'll go ahead and leave that open. Yeah, we'll go down this one. That's fine. All right, back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Yep, yeah, no diesels on the SOL. We, we missed that memo. Don't even know what a diesel is. Never heard of her. So now you see why this is more of an operation simulator. And yes, I know I'm going 30 miles in the yard because he's going to highball in the yard. Hey! Um, the, they've, the game right now is more geared towards operations and logistics and this is why this game this is where the difficulty of this game comes because it is literally you're managing so much i've got how many trains have i got running now four four all four of them are doing something completely different i've got two trains that are for the most part remaining idle and then i've got 
Actually, I got five trains. I've got the Big Ten Wheeler, the 200, the 19, and then two Connies. I've got five trains. Two of them are sitting idle. Three of them are working just as hard as I can work them. Working them like rented government mules. I was actually curious because we, we hit that one. Nope, still 99%. I have yet, I mean, I've been, we've been going pretty hard now for 11 days, and I have not worn these engines out. I know Schnauzer did a video where his engines were getting down to like 20%, and I don't know if, I don't think he derailed. I won't say that he didn't, because I don't know. But, uh, wear and tear would be a thing. That's gonna, <laughs> that's a whole nother layer. You gotta hire shop personnel, um, and the whole nine yards, and, you know, these things are all plane bearings, so they really have to be inspected. Even though, theoretically, the Class 1 would do it before they get to you. It's just, it's like, how deep down this rabbit hole do you want to go? And I know that the, the devs are kind of taking it in steps. They don't want to throw too much at everybody at one point. You know, here in early access, make this game like, oh my god, what is this? Um, from discussions that I saw on Discord earlier today, it does look like the, the game developers are looking at options for people that want more out of this game. Um, because they're they're sim players too, so it's like they they get it. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so for this switcheroony actually check he's he's here he just pulled in how about that yes I know I'm not watching my train so silly. what are you gonna do I own the railroad all right so he's gonna unload um so what I was gonna say is I'm gonna have to do we're gonna have to saw that train we're gonna have to split it push some into track one some into track two and then and then be done with it all right, conductor, kick these people off the train, please. Kind of look here. Yeah, we're doing good. Looking for this track right here. This, if you if you want to know, I mean, this is this is about as close to multi managing as I can get, and I'm surprised that I'm able to do it and talk and walk and chew gum and pat my head and rub my stomach and stand on my fingers and all that mess we got 20 more to go people unloading you guys can unload faster I mean throw them out the windows they're open everything's an emergency exit when you need it 13 more let's see how much is this so this is going to be a little bit of a mixed bag we should make Somewhere around two hundred and forty dollars, I think. If I'm not mistaken. No, it'd be more than that because we had. Well, no, it'll be less than that because we picked up people in Ela, and that's only going to be a dollar fare. And I didn't see what the number was, so two hundred and eighteen, and we've got sixty-nine. Nice. Going to Bryson, we've got 35 going to Ela, so this is going to be a full, a full load once again. So let's just go ahead and get these. Let's just put Ela and Bryson for both of these. And I know I could have done copied a couple, and I didn't think about it until after the fact. All right, we're done with that. Stop. Camera time. All right, we want to. Oh, wrong track. I was looking at the wrong one. Carry on. Let me make sure I've got nine cars here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's nine cars. Nine cars fit on the siding. That means I can only take seven with me. Seven and. Yeah, seven cars. That's all that's going to fit in there anyway. Put the flats on one and the boxes on the other. How about that? How about them apples?
Good enough. Back it up. Come on, throw it in reverse. I know you can do it. I think that's a Johnson bar too, so you can really, you can really switch these guys on the fly. I think I didn't even look to see if the Mikado had a had a Johnson bar or reverser. Which, by the way, I heard some people. I think, I think the VRA, the Virtual Railroader Academy, they had they had some talk about Johnson bars at one point. And they they were discussing about they didn't know they didn't quite know where the origin came from. They thought it was a reference to male genitalia, and it's it's not. <clears throat> as best as I can tell, because that the story of it is kind of lost to history. There is a tool. It is called a Johnson bar, and it is a it's a big lever device with wheels on it, and it's made for moving machinery, really heavy objects. I think one of one bar can move like three thousand pounds. And if you if you just do an internet search for Johnson bar tool, it will it will come up the very first image. If you look at what it looks like. And then you look at a Johnson bar and a locomotive, they look very similar. And I think that is where the name come from. I've heard some people say that it's an executive that was with Baldwin Locomotive Works. And I'm like, uh, I don't know about all that. Uh, to me, it made more sense to guys that had, you know, maybe worked in a factory or something like that. They just got in the habit of calling them the Johnson bar because that was a pretty common tool at the time. I don't know that that is the origin. Like I said, that one's kind of lost to the ages. No one really knows where it comes from. I know that I've got these extra cars on here. This is just saving some switching. Remember, this is all about few as few moves as you need to get the job done. And we're going to have just a little bit of room. It's going to be tight, tight, tight getting in here. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted the 10 wheeler is because it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. So let's see here. Clear the switch. Good enough. Throw the switch. Go to Kahumi. And we'll just shove this one on in here. I had mentioned wheel slips before. Apparently the P18 that Pacific had a problem with wheel slips. They had the tractive effort calculated wrong or something. It was a math error, rounding error, or something like that. When you would dispatch the AI, it would just sit there and wheel slip. Uh, I, I have yet to encounter a wheel slip. Now I know there's this whole thing. I know that it's been a little bit of an argument in the community about wheel slips, what causes wheel slips and, and X, Y, Z. And, there is a big science behind it. I can tell you, I mean, there's, there's different variables. So you have trailing tonnage that does play a factor into it, but it also has to do a lot with your factor of adhesion, which is actually in the game. I'll show you here as soon as I get these cars spotted, what that looks like. Close. Uh, wrong one. I almost, I do that every time. I wish the throttle and the reverser were over here and the brakes right there because it's just so much easier to grab. That's just me. It would be nice if we could customize this. But that's that's like the 83rd time that I have done that where I've just grabbed the, I've gone to grab the brake and I've ended up grabbing the throttle instead. Um, the factor of adhesion, you pull them up here, you see factor of adhesion is four. There's a four, five, four, three, five, three. The ones we just bought, the logging Mikado, that's a four. The big 10 wheeler has a five, three. So, I mean, it'll, it'll put it down and go. So that plays a big, uh, plays a big factor in how you get the power to the wheels. And a lot of that is weight balancing type of tires on the, on the locomotive wheels play a factor in that as well. There's hard locomotive tires, soft locomotive tires, uh, softer ones, as you can imagine, it's like, you know, tires on your vehicle, different tread patterns. They grip the road better. 
softer ones also wear out quicker. They break quicker. There's different applications for them. If it's a switching engine, you wouldn't want necessarily to have hard locomotive tires on it because um, it's just going to sit there and slip. And the same thing for a switch engine or for a road engine, you wouldn't want to have soft tires because they're going to wear out. So you, you have to look at the applications individually and determine um, what you want for each, for each individual application. All that being said, there is, I mean, there is a formula for figuring out, um, it has to do with the trailing tonnage you have, your factor of adhesion, the amount of power that you're putting down. The main advantage that diesels have over steam locomotives is they both create all their power from rest, diesel and steam. DC electric, the only thing that can rival a steam locomotive, steam, piston, rod engine, or just steam in general, is that a DC electric motor can make all of its power from rest just as a steam locomotive can. But the way they get there is a little bit different. A steam locomotive has to move in order to make its power, a diesel does not. Which, there is an old saying, a steam locomotive can start, or I'm sorry, a steam locomotive can pull more than it can start, and a diesel can start more than it can pull. And what that has to do is, what that has to do with, <clears throat> is a steam locomotive is constant, constant horsepower and variable torque. Steam locomotive will make all of its power that you're going to get out of it up to about 10 miles an hour. That's where you get all the tractive effort that you're going to get. After that, it starts to fall off. Some locomotives are, it varies a little bit, but for the most part, up to about 10, you're getting everything. After that, it starts to fall off. How fast it falls off depends on the engine, depends on the size, depends on the tractive effort and, and all that. Size of the drivers, weight on drivers, how it's balanced, whole nine yards. A diesel is constant torque variable horsepower. Now, horsepower on a steam locomotive is rated by the boiler. Boilers, and I think this is still true today, are they go by a horsepower rating, and it's an equivalent. That's sort of the power that you have to keep moving. And I think I've mentioned this in one of the Run 8 videos that I did where um, torque is what starts you. In this case, torque being tractive effort. They're kind of the same, but a little bit different. Um, torque gets you started. Horsepower keeps you going. And horsepower will determine how fast you can go too. So if you have enough horsepower, you can go as fast as you want. If you have enough torque, you can start anything you want. So the the limiting factor of a steam locomotive is because it makes its power at a slow speed and the horsepower doesn't change, you have a cap. With a diesel, well, let me say this differently. Steam locomotive, as long as it can move it, chances are it will keep it in motion. Unless some things change. If you encounter a hill and you're overloaded for, you, you run out of power for that hill, you're not gonna make it. If you're, if you're on flat, if you can get the train started, you will keep it going as long as you have water. On a diesel, a diesel can, might be able to start something on a grade, but once you're in notch eight, you have all the horsepower that you're gonna have. And doesn't matter how much torque you have, if you don't have the horsepower to keep that speed going, you're going to stall. And I know some people are gonna say, well, that's not right. Well, without like getting super technical and doing a bunch more things to, to come up with the terms, that's as good a definition as I can get you. If somebody wants to say it's wrong, Okay, that's fine. You come up with a better way of explaining it. But simplest terms is torque, tractive effort gets you moving, horsepower keeps you moving. 
and because the steam locomotive makes all its horsepower from, from dead, because the boiler is your horsepower, it needs to move in order to make its torque. And the only way you can move is, like, if you have a heavy load, and there's a lot of resistance through whatever, um, if you're on an incline, you've got plane bearings here, there's rolling resistance, whole nine yards. Once it starts moving, it will tend to stay moving. It's almost like Newton's Newton's law, object in motion stays in motion. That's, it's always been the hardest part of a steam locomotive is to get it started. But if you can get it started, you're good. Okay, off that for a little bit. I'm gonna get this switching done. Look at there, it's only 7.30. We've been at this for 30 minutes and I've almost got all of it. I got two more cars to drop here and then I'm gonna do Bryson off screen. So, let me think. I think I've still got the fusees set up here. Let me go up here and look. Oh, wrong place. But what I was getting at with the, the whole tractive effort thing was, it is an interesting mechanic that would be, would be nice to have, but as you can see, there's already a lot of stuff going on, and I can totally sympathize with why the devs did not want to add it. Would it be good on a multiplayer server? Absolutely. It makes you think about the stuff that you need to do to um, to keep your railroad going. We'll give that a 20. And for me, this is one of the reasons why I actually like this game is because no yeah screw it let it rip he's only going to go 35 anyway so it doesn't really matter um for me like it may sound like i'm stressed out running back and forth here but this is actually it's a little bit of stress but then once you're done with it it's like oh, that wasn't too bad so we've got cars that are up here We'll just go up here and check on him. Make sure he made it. They're loading, so that's good. We'll go down here, and this one should be unloading fairly quickly. Well, we've got... Actually, I think that one was already... Nope, it's dropped one. Okay, so that one's already unloading. So one thing, and this is something that I probably should have asked the devs. So we go over here to locations and the sawmill and it's saying that the quantity in store okay it's gone up it was saying that the quantity in storage was only like 30 and it was like 30 percent of what its capacity was and i had plenty of logs there and it's like it wasn't taking them so i don't know if it needs cars sitting on the so2 and so1 tracks or if you know it's, it's kind of like in railroads online where you just take the logs to the mill and you just drop them in the pond until the pond's full so I think I had I think I'd mentioned this that my plan was I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of pulpwood cars and just starting start loading up pulpwood and logs and then use um, once I get the other end of the railroad opened up where I've got another interchange is either here in Whittier or up here in Bryson because this is all logging right here logging in pulpwood one of the two i'm either gonna just have tons and tons of logs ready so that all i have to do is just move them back and forth so i don't have to keep running cars back and forth to the interchange a couple different ways that i'm looking at at doing this all right what do i need to do next need to go and get this guy I gotta get these cars swapped out so what do we got here these are both bound for interchange these are both bound one's bound for there one's bound for the house track and let's see these cars are not ready correct 34 and 8,000 yeah they they got a few more days before they're ready 
So, what do we want to do? Well, clearly I need to get on the other end of the train. So let's shove these into this little siding here and then we'll just run around on it. And that'll make, make life a little bit easier for me. Um, actually, no. We're going to shove this forward. Yeah, that's going to make it, that's going to make this job easier. All right. We're just going to shove forward. We're going to get that car in the clear, and then we're just going to run around it. <clears throat> Good enough. break disconnect and off we go I'm actually not going to take the cars from the interchange I'm just going to leave them here in the siding and what I did yesterday was um, I would just leave the cars that were bound for the interchange like when I went up to the bridge site, there were the cars that were empty. I just ran up there, grabbed them, and as I was coming back, I'd grab the cars that I had set off. And that seemed to work fairly well, and that's what I'm going to do today. Because this, this locomotive needs to get up to Bryson, where it's going to stay. And 382's there. Need to go up and unload him. Here, get that switch ready. Actually, it makes more sense to do this. We'll grab these cars for interchange right now. Let me save the switching move. Which there is, the, a lot of people have said this is this is what this game is designed for. It's it's almost a puzzle thing. So when you get there in the morning, you have to sit down and say, okay, what do I need to do to make this happen? What do I need to do to make the magic thing go? All right, a little bit more. Kaboom. Right. That <clears throat> and that and off we go. And then we'll just run around, grab this, put that car back up in here, and then we'll back down over, put this in the siding, let him stay there, and um, probably gonna call it that. Probably gonna call it that. I did open the switch, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'll just leave everything over here. Whenever I make the last move, I'll just leave those cars for the interchange in that little siding or that spur track. And we'll call that good for today. And then I'll just I'll grab the cars whenever I come back through with the Mickey. Did it again. Yeah, being able to customize this HUD would be a big plus. If this car if this wasn't such an uphill, I would probably kick that car in there just to save a little bit of time, but that's alright. It's not the end of the world. It's going to take all of about a minute and a half more to do this. Which that is one of the things that I'm surprised about this game. As, as, as intricate as some of this switching stuff can be, it really does not take a whole lot of time because of the way they've got the controls set up. Because you're not having to sit there and wait for reservoirs to charge. I mean, if you think about Run 8, if you're doing everything in Run 8 realistically, it takes forever to do anything. 
and there's no economy to speak of so it's not like it's the end of the world but it's like you have to get sometimes in this game you have to get a little creative on how you do stuff which I have had to work with less track than this did I set the wrong handbrake okay this was the handbrake actually why did I do that this one needs to be set I'm gonna leave it here for right now Now see if I'd done that in real life, if I'd yanked the throttle out to 100%, we'd, yeah, we'd be sitting there spinning. It is, I mean, as much as I want realism, it does make this game a lot more tolerable as far as the, the tedium of switching. In that, um, you know, it doesn't take as long to get a train going. <clears throat> you hook up and then you're pretty much ready. But, but, it is something that I think that they should look at putting into the game. Alright, we make this drop here. Make some money off of that. What did that last set pay for us? $53 per car plus a timely bonus of 4 bucks. So we made 57 bucks off of that. 57 per car. How much is that all total? 228 and 285? Actually, more than that. No? What is that? 500 bucks? It's not terribly. Not a terrible haul. Five hundred bucks for not too much work. Is it the best pay? It, eh, it's not terrible. I mean, it's a fact of life that if you're gonna if you're gonna get anywhere with this with this game, you got to take out a loan. That's the way railroads worked. I mean, if you ever look really closely at a steam locomotive chances are you somewhere on there you're gonna find a uh, actually that was the wrong, wrong car this is the car um, chances are you're gonna find some quarter some kind of trust plate on it and what that trust plate means is it's just like some engines are today a bank actually owns that engine it's being leased through the railroad until or the, or the railroad's making payments to the bank. The bank owns it. Um, 09 had a trust plate on it. And I can't remember. I've got a picture of it somewhere. But um, basically what that meant was the bank bought it. And if you think about City Financial, they're one of the biggest holders of uh, locomotives in the country. There's a lot of I mean, I think Union Pacific owns most of their fleet. BNSF owns most of their fleet. I think CSX still leases a bunch of locomotives. And it's just cheaper for them. But steam locomotives, it, I mean, that's it started from there. If you look around enough on a steam locomotive, chances are you're going to find a truss plate on it. And that, that plate will say w what bank owned it, and it'll have some numbers on it. And uh, it's actually pretty interesting that that's one thing that, about the railroads that never really changed over the years we haven't taken too long that's taken about 10 minutes or so 10 12 minutes to get done and we'll be done here shortly. We just got to get back through that switch and go up there to that spur track. Kith.
it's time for my guy to hop on and do some work. I know I've got passengers up there waiting. It's all right. Ah, missed it. Missed that. Get up there. Okay. One more little switch move, and then I can send everybody up to Bryson again. And, well, actually, this guy's got to go to Hila. He needs to go up there and finish switching. Let's see, take some bets on this. I'm gonna say 45 bucks is what we're gonna make off of this one. And 65. That's not bad. Not for a box car. Certainly not. All right, we're in the clear. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and. Last thing I want to do is we're going to watch the 382 pull gracefully into the station, which is over here. All right. And actually, oops, I select it, and we'll do... Let me do this before I, before I do anything. And then we'll gracefully watch it come into the station here. As I completely botch this, just watch. And that concludes our broadcast day. So I'm going to go to work and I will tell you what's going to be next. Next milestone is the signals from Whittier to Bryson. As soon as I got that done, which I'm guessing current financial situation. Let's see. Overnight, we made $4,600 from the sawmill, which is where my bread and butter is right now. I'm going to say that if we continually make between five and six thousand dollars a day, I'll probably, it's most likely going to be the next video within a day or so. Um, I'm off for the next two days, and that's what I plan on doing is recording videos. So, um, next video that I will put up will be the signals, which should hopefully be tomorrow. So, that being said, I will see you in the next one.